Good afternoon, uh, good evening, advocate. Oh, is it professor? Yes. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. How are you? Uh, good evening, uh, Deputy Chief Justice and Commissioners. Thank you, I'm fine. Good, good. Ooh, you, you have a whole lot of educational qualifications. It's going to take a while to get through them. Buries, LLB, LLM, and the doctorate. Yes. Mm. You started as a police officer yes. in 1982. Yes. Mm -hmm. But you would have been fresh from high school then, I imagine. And uh, you rose through the ranks and became a sergeant, but then you left in 1988. Yes, Deputy Chief Justice. Yes. Now, there's this gap uh, in, in your employment chronology between 1988 and 1996. Am I right to assume that you went back to school because I see two degrees in, the, in that in intervening uh, period? Yes, Deputy Chief Justice, I went back to university full time. Mm. Uh, and then you decided to become an attorney. You did articles and indeed joined the sidebar. Yes. Until 2002. Yes, they did. Chief then you did various other things. You, you worked for provincial government uh, as the head of department of safety and community licensing. Then you were municipal man manager for two municipalities, then you taught, you were a university lecturer at Northwest. Yes, Deputy Chief. What, what did you teach there? At, at Northwest, I taught um, interpretation of statute, property law, and family law. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You were a senior lecturer, then you became senior lecturer at UNISA, still teaching the same subjects. When I arrived at UNISA, David Chief Justice, I taught civil procedure and law of evidence for four years and thereafter moved to public law where I taught constitutional law and local government law. Uh, and then you became associate professor, full professor ultimately in 2021. Yes. But then you decided to join the bar. Yes. And that's where you are. Yes. Ah. So I was right to call you advocate then. That's your other title. Yes. Mm. All right. Uh, how many acting stints have you had in the high court? I have acted now for 40 weeks, mm -hmm. uh, Deputy Chief Justice. And have you managed to produce written judgments during that period? I have now written 53 judgment. Mm. And that's in addition to all these uh, articles, these publications you list as yeah. an academic. Yes, David Chief. So yes. many of them. Yeah. Mm. Were you able to produce your judgments on time? Yes, Deputy Chief Justice. Right now, I do not have any uh, outstanding mm. uh, judgment. Are you acting at the moment? I'm still acting. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, some of the law bodies have uh, raised the concern that you may need more experience as an acting judge. It may not be an opportune time right now. Would you say you are ready for permanent appointment? Deputy Chief Justice, I believe I'm ready mm -hmm. uh, because I, I, I've been able to cope uh, with the pressure. Uh, and during the time when I was given uh, time to act, I've never disappointed. And I remember even at one stage, one of the senior judges who was going somewhere gave me her motion court role, and on that week alone, I had to do two motion court role, including 
my daily duties. So I think I'm able now, Chief Justice. Mm. Yeah. All right. I'm going to hand over to the rest of the commissioners to put questions to you. Uh, AJP Madondo, do you have questions for Professor Matenz? Uh Thank you, Mr. Jay. Uh, Good afternoon, Mr. Matanjo. Good afternoon, Acting Deputy, Acting Judge President. So, because you have said something about your acting appointment, then I'll start from there. Because in April, you were interviewed before this commission. Yes. And uh, this same problem was raised that your acting stint was not adequate at the time. Yes. And we have indicated at the time uh, how, um, how, how many times had you acted? At the time I've acted for 25 weeks and now I've acted for 40 weeks. And at the time I've written 23 judgment and now I've written 53 judgment. And at the time I had not yet attended the aspirant judges training calls. And now I've attended aspirant judges training calls. So I submit that I have progressively acquired the relevant experience. So you received uh, an award uh, for being a best researcher. Am I correct? It's correct, uh, Acting Judge President. In fact, the NRF, it's, a diff it's different from the award. The NRF, I obtained the NRF uh, as an international recognized researcher. The award is what I received when I presented a research paper at an international conference in Spain where my paper was voted as a best paper. So this skill you have acquired, would it be beneficial to you in the performance of your judicial functions? The school I've acquired will be beneficial because I have received advanced training on research and writing skills and critical analysis. And that skill assists me to deliver my judgment in time to perform the court deliverables of a judge, that of writing judgment. Okay, in other words, that will be a valuable asset. Yeah. Uh, you also obtained an LLM degree with specialization in human rights. So with such a qualification, or will such a, a qualification be of any assistance to you in the performance of your judicial functions? My, my qualification on fundamental right have assisted me and created consciousness on human right and respect for diversity and enable me to protect human right better. In my judgment then, it will assist me to write judgment <coughs> in line with the human right as it is stated in our constitution that our democracy, that human right is the cornerstone of our democracy. And all judges actually are required to promote the spirit of human right when writing their judgment. So it will be of assistance. And you also have an LED. Yes. Uh, 
Will it also assist you? It will be of assistance to me because during the process when I started for LLD, then I acquired extensive research skills and critical analysis which will assist me in writing and also performing my duties. And um, Aft is of the view that you do not demonstrate the abilities and experience of a high court judge. Do you know on what basis does it say this? No, sir, I do not have any uh, clear picture why there is this criticism. Uh, because if the criticism was clear and specific, then I'll be able to respond to it accordingly. But I believe I've always conducted myself with integrity and interacted with both colleagues and litigants and councils with integrity. Yes, uh, also the BLA says that uh, it does not support you because you have not acted for the minimum of three terms. Yes, I have now acted more than three terms because I have now acted for 40 weeks, which translate to four terms and which also translate to full year acting stint. And we have also authored a number of legal articles. I have extensively published and I've even published an academic book published by Juta Law Book. So according to your assessment, do you do we need more time for acting purposes? According to my assessment, I'm now ready because if I consider that I, I have served articles, practice as an attorney, I've served pupillage, past pupillage, currently practicing as an, as an advocate, I've also worked as an, a senior uh, academic. So combining all that, that should make me an all-round uh, potential judge. OK. Uh, thank you, TCJ. Thank you, AJP. Uh, Premier? Thank you very much, uh, TCJ. Good evening, uh, Professor Matendra. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, you've just indicated that between the last time you were interviewed and this interview, you've now accumulated 40 weeks, uh, 40 weeks, you said. No, in total, because when I was interviewed in April, I have acted for 25 weeks, mm. but now, I've acted for 40 weeks. All right. Now, what, within that 40 weeks, inclusive, ne? within that 40 weeks, how many times uh, did you preside over motion court and how many times were you able to hear urgent matters? Almost the practice that said is almost whenever you are in motion court, then you'll hear urgent matters. I was in motion court almost every week. Every week of the 40 weeks? Every week of my acting stint. All right. Um, OK, I promised you one question, DCG. I'll stop there. Thank you. <laughs> DCJ. After Commissioner Marumahai. 
Thank you very much, uh, Deputy Chief Justice. Good evening, Advocate Matunja. Good evening, Commissioner. Uh, I must declare that I do know uh, Advocate Matunja. In fact, he has external for some of my courses, and I've also been an external examiner for at least one of his LLM students, if I remember correctly. Yes, now I recognize you, Commissioner. <laughs> I want to ask you a, a question. Um, I know that your, your, your research academically, um, it has revolved broadly around constitutional law, uh, but mostly in relation to local government and the structures of local government. Yes. Currently in South Africa, we are seeing a disregard of certain processes in relation to procurement in the local government sector. And all the legislation that governs the, the operations of, of, of local, local councils and municipalities. I just want to, to understand from you, what can be done to ensure legally that those who are entrusted in running municipalities, especially from a procurement point of view, are able to understand, first and foremost, the laws that govern them, but most importantly, they are held accountable for the misgivings that they do at that level of government. Thank you, Commissioner. My, my view is that this problem is not only located to local government. However, what exacerbates the issue in local government is that local government, in my view, it's over-regulated. Over-regulated as it is, people normally who are sent to local government might even, some of them, might even find it difficult to, to, to interpret and understand thoroughly those legislation. Not all of them, but some of them. Thank you very much, DCJ. Uh, Commissioner Singh? Yes, sir, thank you very much, and good evening, Advocate Potenka, and just for the Commission to know that I've known him for many, many years. But I just want to follow on uh, the good professor there on how do you think this extensive knowledge that you've acquired and, and, and it's commendable that you've done such research will contribute to the judiciary dealing with issues of corruption and maladministration? And have you come across any matters that you've presided over where you had to use this research that you've acquired in making a judgment? At a, big, a bigger picture, Commissioner, research, especially at the senior professor level, should have an impact. In other words, it should contribute to the development of knowledge and dissemination of knowledge. So in my field, I, I have done that. For instance, if you have read one of my papers about judicial entrenchment of constitutionalism, I, 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 before everyone tackled the issue of uh, appointment of chief justices under the theme of judicial independency. So I, I'm the one who, who bemoaned that and uh, as it stands, the current chief justice and the Deputy Chief Justice are no longer appointed according to the previous dispensation. So what I'm saying, Commissioner, is that at the senior professor level, you write to make impact. But whether what I've written have an impact on corruption, that I won't dwell because my writings firstly was on multi-level governance and thereafter my writing concentrated on 
constitutionalism and democracy. Thank you very much, uh, DCJ. Thank you. Thank Patrick, you, Mr. Commissioner. Commissioner Baloy. Thank you, DCJ. Good evening, uh, Professor Matenjo. Good evening. Yes, I, I just want to, to check my, my maths, that my maths is correct. You, you, you say you were admitted in 98, and then you were with the FEM Bosa, and then in April 99, you went on to practice for your, I mean, for your own account. So you, you were with Bosa for one year, the FEM yes, Bosa was yes. incorporated. And then with your FEM, it was 99 to 2002, which is about uh, three years, I think. That's correct. So that's four. And then you went to the bar uh, in 2021. That's five. So that's yes, five years. Yes. And of course, in 2021, we can fairly uh, discount for the COVID that happened, um, the lockdowns and, and, and the effect on our work. So even at the bar, it's not a full year, really. In 2021, you accept that at least? Yes. OK, all right. So the, the sum of your practical experience uh, in court work, if at all, the sum of it is that four or five years plus the 40 weeks that you have, that you have acted. That's am correct. I, am, am I correct? Yes. All right, OK, thank you. Thank you, Tisijan. Any more questions from the virtual platform? And for me, no, thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Professor, it's time to part. We don't have any more questions for you. Thank you, and you're excused. Thank you very much.